for me, marrying Steve was nothing like that. I fell in love with him the same as any other person would, and, for, and marrying him was a positive choice. I think in our society, where women are afforded little respect and disabled people are, if, are afforded even less respect, our relationship redresses the balance of power, and we find that it's a very egalitarian thing. Who can the disabled trust? In a risk business like marriage, won't the able-bodied run away? Rosie and Stephen are two of the six British thalidomides who have married each other. And I think what helped to cement the relationship was a special trust and understanding and a certain extra bonding which perhaps you wouldn't always have if, if I'd married uh, an able-bodied person. I may be worrying at the back of my mind would they suddenly find that they no longer like being with a disabled person, that they may go off, leave you and marry um, an able-bodied person because they were missing out on something. But it's something as little as um, not being able to put your arms around your husband. Steve can honestly say that that doesn't worry him. Of the 201 thalidomides who have married, the vast majority have not married the disabled. They've chosen able-bodied partners. Is that a victory, to win the able-bodied? A mark of escape from the disabled tribe? Today, where are they now? 30 years on, the new experience for thalidomides is parenting. So what happens when unmade bodies produce a child that is whole. Disability doesn't have to begin at the beginning. In fact, for Jeanette, the first four limb deficient ever to have a baby, its start was delayed for 25 years. It's only when I actually became a mother that I realised I was physically disabled. Because when my, my daughter cried and she was in the cot beside the bed and she happened to be crying, I couldn't bend down and pick her up, but it was so frustrating not being able to do what normally a mother should be able to do, like pick a baby up when it's crying, hold it, cuddle it, feed it. If I fed her, she was sick because the way I held the buckle. So that, in the end, I couldn't do. Um, it ended up that my mum and my husband did most of it. But just simple things like that that I couldn't do, that really then showed me that I was disabled. Stand up, Ken. And we're Snoopy. Where's Snoopy? You don't get Snoopy for me. Where's Snoopy? And I'm sure every mother would agree there's nothing better than when you first pick a baby out of a bath and wrap it in a towel and hold it. There's nothing, you know, it's just that special moment. They haven't got any outside skin on. You know, it's their bare, bare skin. It's hard to explain. What a, what a nice feeling it is. But I felt very, very jealous that somebody else had this intimate experience, which I personally could not have. The first contact that my daughter had wasn't with her mother. It was with, as far as I'm concerned, a total stranger. I felt very, very bitter. What other colour? The story of thalidomide begins with a child and ends with a child. One day, Kellyanne will understand how her birth disabled a mother, but enabled a grandmother's sadness to pass away. 25 years, I carried so much guilt about. And now Jeanette got this perfect baby girl. And to me, I knew that that was going to be my job, was to help bring this baby up for her. I didn't resent it one bit. And all I wanted to do was just hold and love her. And I had seven minutes with that baby on my own. That's the best seven minutes of my life.
I don't know, just can't explain them. And I felt so much better afterwards. The most wonderful day of my life that was. She was lovely and fair Like the roses of summer But it was not her beauty And to end with, I always say a saying from Alice through the Looking Glass when she met a unicorn, and she said, oh, I didn't know there were, there were creatures like you. And the unicorn turned around to her and said, well, if you believe in me, I shall believe in you. <laughs>